What's up, everybody? Welcome to a new video. You guys see the title. You see the Game of Thrones reference, how it relates to print on demand. I'm going to be making a video talking about this today because, honestly, it was, I guess you could say, prompted by a question. And I said I would make this video a few days ago, so here it is. So, first of all, before I even begin with the whole Game of Thrones reference, just you know, I'll explain myself in just a minute. I'm going to go ahead and read this question. It says, Hey, Mark. Great video as always. I've been watching your channel for a couple months now, and I'm just so impressed how every single thing or platform or tool you start, you don't stop until you master it to perfection. That is a very real and variable, a variable, a valuable excuse me, quality. I believe that I heard you say multiple times how during starting something new, you always go monk mode and distance yourself from all distractions in order to stay focused. Can you please make a more detailed video of how you manage to keep your never-ending motivation, inspiration going, and how you deal uh, with burnouts? Thank you for advice. Sorry if my grammar's wrong. Um, English is not my first language. Peace. And then Miss Molly commented under, and she said, I want to know too. So that video got three thumbs up, so I figured I might as well go ahead and share it. Now... The reason why I'm making this video is not to brag or boast, because trust me, I have nothing to brag or boast about. It's actually just to impress upon you that you guys can do the same thing. Now, to be clear, the comment here says, you know, how I master all these new businesses or tactics or skills to perfection. The truth is, I don't actually master anything to perfection. You know, I believe, me personally, you could always improve, you could always do better. And to be honest, guys, I get my motivation in three different ways. The first way is, you know, in real life. I see people who are doing things bigger and better than I am. I look at people like Logan Paul, Jake Paul. I know that might sound a little cliche or cheesy, but you got to give it to them. These young guys are out here doing things that nobody their age is doing. They're out there succeeding, making millions and millions of dollars and built it from, you know, I don't want to say from nothing, but from a traditional, regular, you know, American household, you know, and just to say that, it, it, to me, it motivates me. So the first thing I do is I look to people who are more in, uh, successful than I am, and I look to people who are more, you know, and I look to people who motivate me more. You know, I look at Logan, I look at Jake, I look at other celebrities, not all celebrities, I'll be 100% honest with you. Some people, even though Elon Musk is very, very motivating, for some reason, I just look at his level to be unattainable for me, just too high. So for me, I look at things that I can rationalize with, things that I can make sense in my head. And honestly, the story, I've been a Logan Jake fan all the way uh, since the beginning, really. Um, so the story, their story is what motivated me. And the truth is, and this is the second reason, the second thing that motivates me more, is I think of stories. And I think of what my story would be like, you know, from beginning to end. And, you know, I talk about my story sometimes. I, I mean, I've given little little hints here and there. I've talked a little bit parts of it. But I haven't really went too deep into it. And for those who don't know, I've pretty much struggled at everything from, from you know, birth. Uh, I'll give you walking for an example. When I was born, I was born bow-legged. And I had to get my legs broken and fixed up and repaired so I can e even be able to walk. And I felt like that experience in my life set the precedence almost as a metaphor for the rest of my life, you know. And I struggled with basically everything I did. But I, I am... I don't want to say addicted to stories, but I'm addicted to this idea of, you know, being in the valley and climbing up on that mountaintop, reaching the top, and even though you're tired, you're broken down, you're weak, but you're achieving against all odds, against, you know, for me, I'm one of those type of people that if somebody says to me, you can't do something or you won't be able to do something, it just lights a fire in me, I just, I just have to do it now. You know, it's almost like a mental trigger. And I'm not sure if there's some psychological thing behind that. You know, I don't know. I, I haven't done the, the you know, I haven't, you know, I don't go to therapy or anything like that or counseling. Uh, but, you know, the more d hard you are on yourself and, the uh, you know, the more you expect of yourself, uh, the more you can accomplish, I feel. And, um, you know, the world is for you, f you know, for the taking. And finally, the last thing that motivates me a lot and inspire, more importantly, inspires me, really more than motivation, because motivation is temporary, but inspiration, when you see something, right, it has a more long-lasting effect on you, and that's kind of what I hope this channel does to people, is instead of in the moment, 
inspiration, excuse me, motivation. I want it to be long-term inspiration for other people. Well, I got inspired by movies, believe it or not. One of the, and there were really two series, two series TV shows uh, that really, really inspire me. And this is how Game of Thrones, in my opinion, relates to print on demand. Here you're seeing a picture or pictures of one of the main characters in the Game of Thrones series, Arya Stark. She's been available since uh, season one on the uh, series all the way to the last season. And she's one of my favorite characters because of her story. And I'll give you an example, and I said this before, and how this relates to print on demand. I'm going to explain it. Don't worry. What happens is, guys, with print on demand is we typically, most of us, when I say most of us, I mean most of the people, start in print on demand as their first real business. And when I explain real business, let me explain what I mean. Seeing an ad on how to start a Shopify store or how to do this or how to do that, and people get into it, use it, do it for like a week, and then give up after is not a real business in my opinion. Now, don't get me wrong. Shopify is a real business, but it's about the commitment that makes it a real business. So for most people watching this, it print on demand is probably the first thing that they truly committed to. And you guys know I'm a big believer in commitment and I'm a big believer in, you know, holding on to your dreams without giving up. Okay. And for most people, since this is a print on demand content based channel right now, and I'm not saying that won't change in the future, but since it is right now, um, a lot of the a lot of the situations that a lot of people are in right now is for some people print on demand is their hope it's their dream it's it's something that they could see that actually could work you know they they did the math they did the numbers it seems like it actually could work with a certain amount of work now it's a real thing it's they they get the mechanics of it right they create a design somebody goes purchases the product they make a profit well if you look at that story this idea is very similar to the idea of Game of Thrones' Arya Stark. She started off at, you know, in the castle tops, in, in living in royalty, uh, born to a, the House Stark, you know, royalty family, um, servants to the Lannisters, basically. And when I say servants, you, you know, they're the top two families. I don't mean literally serving them, but they're, to, they're the top two families. And um, you have Arya Stark, which is son of... Uh, uh, what's his name? The, uh, the Hand of the King. Sorry. It's, um, the moment escapes me at the moment. Anyways, the point is, is that she started off in a very high position, royalty position, right? Her father was beheaded in front of her. And she was kicked out out of the castle walls and she basically had a, a, a warrant for her death. There were people, you know, ha- they were on the lookout for her. They were trying to find her so they can kill her. King's orders. And so she kind of fleed the whole city, fleed the place, um, you know, and she went on this journey. And that's where the journey started. But when she saw, when she witnessed her father being beheaded in front of her, her whole thought process in life shifted. She, she, initially, she was just a girl, you know, living in a fairy tale world. Um, then life hit her in the face. And for many of us, at a certain point in time, life hits us in the face. You know, we have to go out there, we have to make money, we have to push past the pain, we have to, uh, we have to do things that we don't want to do. It's not a fairy tale anymore. It's not a dream. And, you know, for me, this was a point after high school. Like, after high school, my mom passed away, things changed, my life started to, you know, I started to see things a different way, and I'm sure there's many, many people who have similar experiences where they have that, you know, this is real life kind of moment, life is not a game anymore, it's not, you know, uh, you know, and everybody experienced it at a different time, but that was really the start of her journey, and through that journey, you know, she's, you know, you could see here a photo, she went blind, she's gotten stabbed before, she's uh, traveled many, many miles on foot, uh, um, she was going to be sold off to her aunt uh, by uh, Sir Gregor, uh, Sir Gregor, or the Hound, it was the Hound, I believe, the Hound, just just the whole story, and then what happened at the very end, and this is obviously every story has a peak, the very end was the best part, where she saved all of humanity from the, wa- the you know, the dead king, the walking, uh, not the walking dead, the ice king, whatever you want to call him. And she saved all the humanity through her training, okay? Now, training for all of us, we're going to have to train a lot to get to where we want to be. 
everybody wants to see themselves in the high rise and the cars and the you know with the hundreds of thousands if not millions in the bank account everybody wants to see that but how many of us are actually willing to train and the truth is is that many people aren't willing to train and that's the difference between the winners and the losers and when i say losers i want to explain i don't mean any kind of insult I just mean people who are the victors at the end of the day and who are not the victors. And if you're not the victors, by definition, you have lost. I think our society kind of plays down or or, um, softens us too much to the point where we can't take or we can't listen to certain words. So at the end of the day, the individual that goes out there, trains, you know, and works really, really hard starting from the bottom to get to the top and, you know... They can only get to. They can only enjoy themselves. They can only be happy. Uh, you know, see, uh, you know, be happy with their success once they finally reach the top. Uh, I could tell you that as I was in the 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 throes of business, the the painful parts, I was in. I was not a happy person. I'm just gonna be a hundred percent upfront and honest with you guys. I was not a happy person. I was not, you know, a happy go lucky smiling type person. No, I was depressed. I was angry. I was sad. I was. I felt like the world was against me. I felt like I was never going to be successful. It was probably the most depressing time in my life. Um, and I was pretty far into depression at that point. And, you know, it doesn't take a, a therapist to figure out what depression looks like or feels like. But I can tell you I was depressed. And, um, you know, I think depression is, believe it or not, actually a good thing. Because if you have depression, that is a signal in your life that something needs to change. Something serious needs to change, whether it be the job that you're doing, whether it be the, you know, the, you know, whatever it is, I'm not, you know, everybody lives in a different situation, has a different situation, but that's really what it is. And I was depressed and the depression motivated me out to finally achieve that quote unquote success. And for me, that, that idea of success was just not working for anybody else and living a financially free lifestyle. When I say financially free, I'm saying I don't have to worry about bills. I don't have to worry about, you know, is the car bill paid or is the house bill paid, is the light bill paid. I don't want to have to struggle to pay bills. I could pay them all, you know, closing my eyes without having to worry about anything. I don't have to, you know, go to a store and figure, do I have enough money in my bank account? To me, that's financial freedom. Not having to go to work for somebody is also financial freedom to me. So it's kind of a big definition. That's what I was achieving for and that was what I I was going for. And, you know, when I looked at these things... The idea of not having that is what truly motivated me past, you know, all the other examples that I've mentioned earlier about, you know, seeing other people who are more successful, uh, seeing the movies, seeing the inspiration. But really, if you guys have seen Game of Thrones, I'm assuming a lot of you have, if you guys have seen Game of Thrones, if you haven't seen Game of Thrones, you gotta watch it. I mean, uh, honestly, I would recommend you watch it. I also relate a lot to those who don't know Ivar the Boneless from Vikings. Now, he was a little... Uh, evil of an individual, but hey, he was started from the bottom and kind of basically got to the top, uh, in my opinion. Um, Now, that's up to opinion. That's a completely different lore, different story, but with that being said, this is kind of what motivates me. It's it's being on the other side of the losing uh, aspect of not having the dreams accomplished, not having everything I wanted to have, not from a material standpoint, once again, but from a lifestyle standpoint, that kind of does it all for me. And that's the big motivator. And so that's really what inspires what motivates me. It's not some deep psychological thing, to be 100% honest. It's just not being in a bad position financially, you know, financial freedom wise, lifestyle wise. And I think the most important thing is our freedom because at the end of the day, you only live once. You, you don't get a second chance at life. You know, at least that's not what most people believe. And so, um, if you're only going to live once, why not live the very best life on your own terms? And passive income does that for me. Passive income helps me achieve that. And, um, you know, doing print on demand is just one example out of many that provide passive income. All right. So I figured I'd tell this little story in this video and uh, hopefully this inspires someone out there. And I mean, I'm not sure who's watching this, but hey, if you guys are watching this um, and you haven't seen Game of Thrones, you haven't seen Vikings, those are two series I highly recommend you watch. I don't think you're going to be wasting your time. There's actually a lot of lessons to be learned. And it is honestly, in my opinion, the two best series of all time on TV. All right. I'll talk to you guys later. Thank you guys for watching. Peace out. Bye.